Okay, welcome to our lesson on bargaining and negotiation for our game theory class. So, in order to bargain, right, we should think about what needs to happen. Like, what needs to happen for there to be a bargain solution? Um, the the key point, and I mean, this is somewhat of an obvious point if you once you think about it, but the total payoff the parties can attain through bargaining has to be greater than what you could receive outside of bargaining. Um, the term or phrase that we'll use in here is uh, the best alternative to a negotiated agreement or BATNA, which just saying the whole must be greater than the sum of the parts. Um, of course, this has to be true. Otherwise, why would two entities get into a bargaining solution, right? There's no reason to bargain with each other if your payoff is better by not engaging in any transaction whatsoever. So in order for there to be a bargaining solution, there has to be a better payoff, which related to, you know, point two, then bargaining is not a zero-sum game, right? Like much of economic trade, um, like economic reasoning, people make transactions because they're both better off, and that'll happen in bargaining as well. So what did Nash find? Now, the cooperative solution, um, you know, this is the same John Nash from the Nash Equilibrium, uh, Nash found a general solution to bargaining. Now, for this solution to exist, the three principles, the outcome uh, shouldn't change if the scale in which the payoffs are measured changes linearly. The outcome needs to be efficient. And if the set of possibilities are reduced by removing something irrelevant, then the outcome should not be affected. So these are the principles that need to hold. And what John Nash then found is he found this cooperative bargaining solution. So the fourth, I guess, the fourth condition, there has to be a better outcome than if no bargaining occurred, right? Otherwise, there would be no transaction. So what do we come up with? We've got an equation here. Um, y minus B divided by X minus A equals K divided by H. So A and B are player A. Okay, so what do we have here with this equation? Um, y minus B divided by X minus A equals K over H. So the, B, the lowercase b and a here are a and b, player a and b's, non-bargaining outcomes. So that's their badness, right? This is the what would happen if there is no solution. Uh, the k and h is the share of the surplus game. So how much benefit are they getting above and beyond their BATNA? Like what, you know, how much more is this? There's the sum of the BATNAs, which would be a plus b. Um, and then there would be some benefit above that, which would be actually y minus y plus x. K divided by H determines the share of this benefit above the bat knot that goes to each of the two players. So that's the X is the amount player A ends up with, Y is the amount player B ends up with. And Y and X are the actual outcome. So H and K are the shares of the benefit, whereas Y and X are the amount uh, that players A and B end up with. So in class, we'll go through a graphical analysis, which might help, um, I think it will help a lot, kind of understand what we're seeing with this particular equation. And I would also refer you to the textbook. Um, this is a really, it's not the necessarily the most intuitive thing that we'll cover on Nash's solution, but it's, there's really good coverage in there. And, and it's a really neat topic um, and an important topic in terms of, uh, Kind of real world bargaining is up there in terms of real world applications for what we'll cover in this class. So when we actually look to solve a, a bargaining problem, the way that we'll be doing this within our game theory class is with um, alternative offer models. And I, what we mentioned here is the total value decays. So we'll have some game where A, can ma a makes an offer and B can accept or reject. If, it, if B accepts, the game's over. If B rejects, the game continues, and B can make a counter offer, and then A can accept, and the game is over, or A can make a, another counter offer, and the game would continue until someone accepts the offer. Uh, this is a sequential move game. So the, there's a, you know, this is a sequence, right? A makes an offer, B chooses to accept or make a counter offer, A chooses to accept or make a counter offer, and so on. And we can solve then for a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, but the reason we can solve for a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium is because there is going to be a definite endpoint if the total value is decaying. So we, with these solutions, we, we 
we are with these models we assume that the value is shrinking over time or decays so a delayed agreement is going to be worth less to the parties involved so this is a type of bargaining that really has a lot of real world applications, ticket scalping, real estate development, any sort of merger and acquisition where the sooner you get it done, the sooner you make increased profits, right? Any type of um, bargaining where time matters, total value decay model might have some relevance for this. So the quicker you make the agreement, the better for both parties involved. What will find when we're going through these problems is that if the total value decays slowly, uh, the slides here say, you know, might be not, the outcome will seem fair. And fair is probably the wrong word here because it's a normative concept, but it would seem more equal. The, the share of the surplus will seem more equal when the total value decays slowly. If the total value though decays rapidly, so if there's a very quick, rapid decay, we're going to see that the player making the initial offer is going to have a huge advantage in these types of games. So when the value of the item is, de is decreasing very slowly, if the offer is not perceived as very fair to player B, the receiving player, or not equal enough or just not good enough for them, they can refuse to make a counter offer and they, they won't be hurt very badly. But if the value is decaying rapidly, the, the initial player is in, got a really big advantage because the second player might get penalized enormously by turning down that first offer. So the initial offer can have a huge advantage and we're going to look through some rather extreme cases of this including one called the ultimatum game um, when, we're, when we cover this in class.